We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to look at, you know, the next conversation, which is about the statement and, you know, the broadcast from the DSS talking about a plan to forestall an interim government. It might also interest you to know that following the highly contested general elections, there have been several concerns before today that some misguided political actors are planning to bring an interim government to power. Now, spokesman for the Department of the State Services, that's the DSS, Peter Afunaya, confirmed the plot on Wednesday, which was yesterday, uh, that the DSS, according to that statement, which was made, you know, via a tweet, uh, he stated that it has identified some key players in the plot for the proposed interim government in Nigeria. Now, most of the planners are politicians, and they have had several meetings to this particular effect. Now, according to the DSS, those planning and plotting to bring an interim government are weighing various options by which their goals can be achieved, and they are, this includes sponsoring of endless violent mass protests in major cities of the country as to warrant a declaration of state of emergency. Now, another is also to obtain a frivolous court injunction to forestall the inauguration of a new executive administration and also the legislative houses at the federal and state levels. Now, the Department of the DSS has also is quoted to say um, that they are strongly, they are strongly warning those planning the interim government move to retract from these devious, uh, you know, schemes and orchestrated uh, plan. They're saying that the DSS is going to monitor development closely and will not hesitate to take very decisive actions. Which some people are saying, what time is it to take a decisive action if you have identified people and necessary legal steps against those that want to frustrate the system? The DSS has also stated that uh, it supports the president and commander in chief in its various, uh, you know, statement and will to ensure that there's a hitch free handover and will ensure that that happens. Now, Nigeria in the past, if you look at our history as a country, we have experienced an interim government. Uh, you know, which followed the June 12, 1993 presidential election. It was won by Mushud Abiola, and it was also annulled by, you know, the former general Ibrahim Babangida that actually led to a serious crisis. Uh, as soon as that crisis seemed to have been abated in a bit, uh, the general uh, Babangida handed power over to Enes Shonekan, as an interim head of state that happened on August the 27, uh, you know, 1993. Now, Shona Kung's government was adjured largely as powerless and was dissolved when, you know, the late General Sania Bacha seized power on the 17th of November, 1993. Now, with all that's been said, let's have uh, a guest join us at this point, Nika Gule. Thank you so much. He joins us uh, right here in Lagos. Nika, are you in Lagos? Yeah, I'm in London, the United Kingdom. It probably would have been an, you know, an oversight. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. But, I mean, briefly, how did you react? What's your response as soon as you saw the statement and you read the tweets and saw the story that's making the rounds? Well, my first reaction uh, when I saw the statement was, uh, well, I, I, the way we do things in Nigeria, um, it, it doesn't just align with the way things are done elsewhere. And I always say, that if it is Nigeria's avowed commitment to join the ranks of the developed world, we simply can't do differently from what they do to be able to be developed. I mean, if you if you want to catch up with someone on a race and, uh, and he's racing with a motor car and you think you can use a bicycle to catch up with him, I wonder how that's going to happen. Uh, and the reason here is because the DSS, or the Department of State Services, formerly called uh, uh, SSS, they, they, their job is intelligence gathering. That is their main job, intelligence gathering. 
They are not a law enforcement agency of government. Their job is to be all over the country, in the communities, plant their people in offices, in markets, everywhere, to gather intelligence. And once they gather this intelligence, they are expected to now hand over this intelligence to law enforcement agencies, the first of which is the, the Nigerian police force. And then the law enforcement agencies are now expected to act on this intelligence and then begin to uh, take the necessary actions to protect Nigeria. And so if the DSS, as they have confirmed in their statement, that they have identified, they are not suspecting, they are not thinking, or they are not just uh, you know, postulating, in their statement, they say they have identified people who want to usurp our democracy. And so what you expect, as it will happen elsewhere, is for the DSS to now hand over this information, this intelligence, quietly to the law enforcement agencies. And then the next move is for the law enforcement agencies to begin to arrest these people who have been identified, who are working against our democracy. And that arrest will lead to their interrogation. And that interrogation will lead to collection of evidence. And that evidence, if it is verifiable, it is substantial, will then lead to charging these people to court. And that court process will lead to incarceration. And incarceration means these elements will be picked out of society and put away in jail so that our society can function very well. This is the process that you expect. But here, the DSS is coming out to make a public statement. I'm trying to understand the import of this statement. Is it us Nigerians? No, no, but I was hoping that, community? Mika Gule, you as an expert, I, I, I was hoping you would help me understand the rationale behind this and what this statement, you know, uh, sets to achieve. I know that you're not of the security extract, but maybe you have an idea what this would actually do for the Nigerian people, this information. I, 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 you are very correct, Mercy, that I, I'm not a security expert. I'm a public affairs analyst. I look at things that are happening and I have opinion over them. People can accept or agree with my opinion or not. That's fine. Now, uh, from my own perspective, I think, uh, let me try to read the mind of the DSS. To read the mind of the DSS is, the DSS are coming out to make a public statement so that those who are behind any plot, as they have seen it, will desist. That is, those people will now know that, oh, their plot is already known by government. So that will now uh, discourage them from going ahead with their plot. I think in the mind of the DSS, that is actually what they are intending to achieve. I'm just trying to read their mind. But on the other side, the DSS is totally wrong to come public with information like this. Because number one, it will tip off those who are behind this plot that, oh, the government understands their current move. What now stops them from taking other moves that they believe the government will not see? Number two, it, it, it just sends the wrong message into the polity. Already the polity is heated up. We have had an election which is disputed. Uh, people are protesting. There is all sort of anger in the system, you know. And then the DSS now comes to drop something on the table to say, hey, people are planning telling national government. That is to even scare us more, scare Monjuri now. You know, people are now, people are being now pushed over the brink. Because when you would have thought that, oh, what they are saying is a lie. You know, nothing is going to happen in Nigeria. We are saying, we are okay. The DSS now confirms that, yes, it's true. International government is coming. There will be chaos. There will be all sorts of things. It, it just, it just, it, it's not good for our democracy. It's not good for our economy. People who are trying to book flights to come to Nigeria and do business are now advising themselves that don't bother to go to Nigeria because the DSS is now saying things are going to happen bad there. So at the end of the day, you discover that 
whatever advantage that the DSS thought they were going to gain by making this statement public has been totally obliterated by the downside of making this statement public. So I don't really understand the import of uh, the DSS coming forward. If they gathered intelligence, by the law setting them up, they know where to channel those intelligence so that action will be taken and not just to come and be making these kind of statements to the public. All right. But I I'd like to ask you, you know, if you look at the crux of the conversation, an interim government, there's a plan to have an interim government installed, despite the fact that there's been a lot of assurances from, you know, the government. Boss Mustafa recently was, he's been on the news and he said, oh, we're going to ensure presidential, uh, you know, transition handover s smoothly. But do you think that as an interim government is possible without the approval of the executive arm of government? It's totally impossible. I mean, when I read that bit in the DSS statement, I even tried to understand if the DSS even knows the workings of government, even if they have an idea of our democratic structure, who can go and sit in Aso Villa and form an interim government without the government of the day handing over to them? Yeah, is that possible? I mean, can, aside from the DSS saying there's going to be a coup d'etat, how is that possible that Nick Agule will just call on Messi and some other people and we march to the federal capital and set up an interim government? Is that possible? It is totally impossible. The only person who can take the reins of power in Nigeria to form a government is as handed over to him by the incumbent president of Nigeria, President Buhari, and sworn in by the chief judge of the federation. That is the only constitutional way that you can form a government. So perhaps, perhaps the media needs to quiz the DSS and ask them how possible the plans that they have unraveled who lead to the formation of an interim national government without President Buhari doing a handover, without the chief judge of the federation doing the swearing in. Then maybe the DSS can tell us the, the, the plans they say they have unraveled on how this interim government can be formed without going through the constitutional way of, of doing it. Because if you look at the statement, the, 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 the DSS says, oh, they are trying to force an interim government through two means. Two means. Number one, that they are going to be doing protests all over Nigeria, and these protests are going to lead to a declaration of uh, a state of emergency. Now you ask yourself, how would a declaration of a state of emergency lead to the formation of an interim national government? How is that possible? If the, the president declares a state of emergency in Nigeria, it only means that the president has assumed emergency powers. And he can bypass uh, some, some of the democratic uh, structures that we have and uh, begin to act to be able to bring the situation to normalcy. It's not going to be some other elements coming in to form a government. The second uh, so route that the DSS, the second route that the DSS says that this interim government will be formed is by saying that these people are going to court to obtain uh, frivolous uh, injunctions, stopping the inauguration of, uh, of uh, the, the incoming government. But then you ask the DSS, if you go to court now, maybe all the way to the highest court, the Supreme Court says, uh, President, I mean, President-elect President uh, Bola Tinubu should not be inaugurated. How then would that mean Nikagule cannot go to Abuja and form an interim national government. It only means that President Buhari will be in office until the day that uh, the, the, the Supreme Court says this is the person who will be president of Nigeria. So whatever it is said, there is no link between what the DSA says these people are planning to do to interim national government. So I think the DSA just dropped interim national government into their statement to, to just, to just uh, go in line with what some people are suggesting that there should be formation of an interim national government, something that the DSS should have dismissed with a wave of hand because it's impossible. Yeah, but, but uh, Nick Agule, I mean, if you look at the suggestion or, you know, the options or some of the statements that the DSS has put out, it talks about court injunction. It also talks about the fact that protests. Now, 
uh, all of this is trickling down from the elections. There's a trickle down effect now because too many persons have been displeased with the outcome of these elections. And we've seen pockets of protest across, you know, little, you know, gatherings of people in different parts where women in Nasarawa, uh, you know, Delta, I mean, uh, you can't even begin to mention, but not uh, simultaneously in the entire federation, but in different parts of the country. And so uh, what does this really mean uh, that those who are protesting the outcome of these elections or those who are saying we're going to court and we're challenging the entire process of the outcome? Uh, is this what the DSS is, re is referring to as a plan to have an interim government? So the, 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 the activities that the DSS uh, says in their statement that are happening are really happening. Um, uh, protests are happening uh, all over the place. Uh, you will see that uh, in a democratic structure, uh, when the election result aligns with the will of the majority of the people, you will see jubilations. So you saw jubilation in Abia State, you saw jubilation in uh, Benue State. You know, there, there were jubilation in some other places where the results as announced or declared by INEC was in line with the majority of how the people voted. But then you will not see in states where that is not the case. There are protests. Like in Nasarawa State, there are protests in Nasarawa State, protests in Kaduna State, there are protests in Enugu State. You know, these are areas where uh, the outcome of the election uh was not in tandem with what the people thought they voted so those things are happening and it, it, it is perfectly fine i mean uh, in, in a democracy uh, you must allow protest because it's the protests that make democracy to thrive I'm, I'm speaking to you now uh in london uh here in the united kingdom if you go to parliament square which is the seat of government of the united kingdom as I speak to you now, you are going to see at least 20 to 30 different groups protesting to parliament, to members of parliament, for one reason or the other. So we must allow people to express their, their, their grievances publicly through protest. So long as the protest is not violent, so long as it's not destructive, the role of the security should be to ensure that there is no breakdown of law and order. You know, so th that is happening, yeah? Then the other thing that is happening, of course, is court cases. There are all sorts of court cases at all levels, right from the presidential to the House of Assembly elections in Nigeria. So all those things are happening. But there is no link whatsoever between these two happenings. That is, protest and judicial uh, processes to the formation of an interim national government. Who can go to Abuja? And then the service chiefs will begin to report to the person, you know. Then the all the permanent secretaries in the in the federal government will begin to report to the person without the person formally taking the powers of office, either from a handover by the president or from a judicial pronouncement or anything like that. Is that possible? The media needs to ask the DSS to tell us how is it possible that some elements can form an interim national government in Nigeria without taking power from President Buhari or being uh, 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 allowed so either by 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 uh, the National Assembly as as we had in the in the other the other time when when President um, uh, Vice President Vice President uh, Gulo Jonathan through the doctrine of necessity was handed over uh, the reins of uh, governance in Nigeria or through a judicial pronouncement. Okay, How but, but, but Gule, we, we have that. to go in no time, but it's important that I ask you this question. And prior to this time, I have tipped to whether you think that history will repeat itself. Now, and if you, we cast the minds back to what had happened in 1993, the, uh, you know, Moshud Abiola elections, June 12, and the fact that, you know, uh, after the crisis had, you know, reduced to some extent, then you had General Babangida at the time handing over power to NSS Shonakon. Do you think that, you know, this probably might just be the case? Because it's, it's if you look at the similarity, we've had an election, people are displeased with the outcome of the election, some persons, uh, and then you have a president-elect and what have you, and people are thinking that, hey, this was not the will of the people. Some others have taken to the street. Uh, there's a lot that's going on. So do you see, you know, uh, history repeating itself? There are similarities. Are you thinking that what we had experienced in 1993 might just be, you know, playing back? 
Well, there is, uh, I've heard people talk about uh, history repeating itself. I even read something on uh, on the internet that had so many similarities between uh, 2023 and 1993, actually 30 years ago. But uh, there is a key ingredient, there's a key element that is not the same uh, between 1993 and 2023. In 1993, we had a president, Ibrahim Babangida, an army general, who was not willing to leave office. He didn't want to leave office. Uh, he was looking for any means to, to, to stay in power. And uh, that an international government uh, was a way of uh, he saying, I'm stepping aside, probably with the idea that in, in due time, he's going to come back. So that was a different situation. In 2023, we have a president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, who has repeatedly told us Nigerians that he is going to hand over and leave on the 29th of May, 2023. So these two scenarios are different. If President Buhari is keen, and I mean, I, I, I'm not a soothsayer, so I cannot go and read his mind to say what he is telling us is different from what is in his mind, then I can say that uh, 2023 is different from uh, 1993 because in 2023, President Buhari has avowed that he's handing over. And if he's going to hand over, then we are going to watch on 29th of May, 2023, uh, President Buhari handing over to President-elect uh, uh, Bola uh, Tinubu. Yes, we know that there's been different, you know, uh, assurance. I mean, you want to say that the government has been very big on it. This government has said that we're going to ensure free, credible elections. Uh, you have the Presidential Transition Council uh, transiting, and then there's been comments even prior to the DSS revelation of having an interim government, which we know that it's not possible to have an interim government without, you know, the government of the day being involved in it. And so what exactly is the DSS saying? Is it that this government is planning to have an interim government? Uh, you know, too many questions uh, begging for answers, just like you've stated. We hope to have, you know, conversations with members of the DSS or those who are in the service, you know, to answer. Although this has been made public contrary to all of the conversations. But Nika Gule, you can also not take out the fact that uh, when someone says they will do a thing and do not do it, that's when you say there's a lack of integrity. And over time, we've had several promises from this government, from President Mohamed Buhari himself. He said, I belong to everybody and I belong to nobody. But over time, for the past seven years, plus and counting, almost eight, eight years, uh, you can't really say that there's been a coherence in that statement of the president saying he belongs to everybody and he belongs to nobody. Now, it feels like over time, if you look at the action, it, it, it's contrary to what he stated. And so what exactly is the thing that Nigerians can hold on to to say, hey, if the president is saying I would hand over, uh, you know, to the next um, uh, pro governor or uh, president elect, then that would be a thing. Should Nigerians take that with a pinch of salt or should we keep our fingers crossed? Uh, too many questions to answer. But Nick, I know that you have some things to say. We've been prompted to leave now. Maybe just in a second. No, I was actually uh, going to praise you for raising a, a matter that probably I didn't even think about. Because, you know, you did say that the only reason, the only way we can have an interim national government is if uh, President Buhari, who is in on seat, proclaims it. And uh, who knows? Uh, is that what the DSS have seen? Is that why they cannot even order an arrest? Is that why they are just warning those who are involved to desist from uh, doing this and all of that? But uh, time will tell. And I agree with you that this government has failed on so many promises. So many. Uh, even the election that they said we're going to have electronic transmission, uh, that has failed. Uh, just like few subsidy and all of those things so uh we, we are we are right to take whatever they say with a pinch of salt but uh fingers crossed let's see what the next few days we hold thank you nick we have to go now and that's the size of a conversation for this first you know uh, topic we take a break when we return we'll be looking at the issue of the scarcity of the naira the availability of it following uh the direction from the cb and the supreme court ruling and what have you stay with us <laughs> 